Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 17 of Reviewing Your Customs. And today we have four really dope artists to share with you guys today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first up, we have a pair here from D Wang 701. All right, Dylan, thank you for selecting my art for this series. I feel very blessed to have this opportunity. My name is Devin, but my friends call me D. Wang. That's the name D. Wang Customs. I am from Fargo, North Dakota, and have been customizing shoes for just over a year. The shoes I created are inspired by Jared Leto and Margot Robbie's portrayal of the iconic Joker and Harley Quinn. I designed them with one thing in mind. What sneakers would those characters wear? The left shoe is what I pictured the Joker wearing and the right Harley Quinn. These are a one of one, but if Jared Leto or Margot Robbie want a pair, hit me up. This pair has been worn multiple times, which I'm sure will only help myself and others learn from this review. Thank you again, D. Wang. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so for a quick little rundown on these, starting off with the Joker shoe, one of the most iconic custom sneaker themes of all time. However, usually you're gonna see the Dark Knight version or the Heath Ledger version of the Joker done on shoes. So it's pretty cool here to see the Jared Leto version brought to life. And rather than going with your classic hexagon pattern, which was utilized in Heath Ledger's button down shirt, the Jared Leto version of the Joker wore this really long leather trench coat where it almost has like this reptile skin on it. So I really like that you utilize that here. Then you have your ha 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 print done on the quarter panels along with a graffiti style background added to it. Then we have some neon green applied to a drip swoosh and on the collars. Then we have some green leather laces along with the Joker's logo on the tongue tag to finish these off. Then for the Harley shoe, we have this really nice turquoise color along with this very subtle argyle print throughout all of those turquoise panels and that turned out incredibly crispy. The toe box and quarter panels feature a blood splatter effect and then on our drip swoosh and collars, we have this really bright neon pink. And some of the last details for these would be the bubblegum pink leather laces and the Harley Quinn logo on the tongue tag of this shoe. Now, overall, there's a great balance here with these two very different themes, the way that you laid everything out, all of your color blocking choices. These definitely have the look and feel of one pair of shoes with two very distinct themes. Now, anytime you're working with neon paints and neon green specifically, you really want to try to build up to this color so that we can get all of these areas really nice and solid. So something that'll really help here is starting off with a very light whitish green and slowly mixing in some of that neon green paint into each additional coat that you do. And that's going to really help cut down on the total amount of coats needed and help make all of your colors much more solid and saturated. Now it looks like within your graffiti effect there's probably a couple areas where your air brush might have sputtered a little bit. Sometimes you could just end up with a little bit of dry tip and although that's an easy fix in between colors and it totally works fine for a graffiti effect, you're okay with a little bit of splatter, you definitely want to make sure that you're always cleaning off your airbrush tip in between colors. You did a really great job on all of your pattern work where you utilize vinyl stencils on these. Especially if we take a closer look at this Harley Quinn shoe, if you really look at that argyle pattern up close, first off, I love your color choice here with how subtle it is, but this argyle work turned out incredibly clean everywhere you look. Now, just a couple of other spots where there's some room for improvement. If we take a closer look at the Joker tongue tag, none of these colors are really that solid. So I do think that this entire tongue tag probably could have used another couple of coats of painters. Then what's great about these is since this is a worn pair, we could take a look at how they actually held up through wear and tear and they look great everywhere. They've held up just fine. But if we take a closer look at some of the creasing areas within the toe box, just near the sides, these are some spots where you do see a little Little bit of that paint cracking and that is far and away the most likely area where you can end up with paint cracking. Now there's a few things that could have happened here, potentially not enough prep work or maybe just not enough prep work spent in that specific high crease area. So that's something you definitely want to do. These do have a super matte look to them. So potentially a little bit too much duller was applied within the paint. 
that's always a possibility. Who knows about the dry time of in-between coats. You definitely wanna leave plenty of dry time, at least 20 minutes in between every coat. And something else that didn't happen on this shoe since the toe box isn't painted is we don't have any paint cracking there. So sometimes if you're still ending up with a lot of paint cracking within your toe boxes and within your designs, sometimes it might be a good idea to just leave that factory white on your toe box. Now that's not gonna work for every single design and every single iteration of every theme, for example. It probably wouldn't have worked as well here to have an all white toe box. I do think that going with the gray and the graffiti effect was a smarter choice for the shoe so you have no choice but to paint the toe box but you of course want to make sure that you have that nailed down so that the shoes can hold up with wear and tear but other than that just a really great joker and harley quinn theme done here i remember the marketing for the first suicide squad movie had that really over the top color scheme. So rather than going dark and gritty on these, I like that you opted for these really bright, vivid colors. Great job by you, man. Next up, we have a pair from Tie Your Shoes 2. Okay, we got a business card and a note here. Hey, I am super excited to be a part of this week's episode and I've been watching the episodes for a very long time, so it's cool to be able to be a part of this. I actually started these shoes with no true end design in mind. Initially, they started off as a practice pair on a pair of shoes I picked up from a local thrift store. Now I wish I would have done them on some clean ones. They definitely turned into one of my favorite art pieces to display. I really would like to do more shoes like this because cartoon work is definitely my favorite. My Instagram and TikTok handle is tie your shoes too. I am grateful for this opportunity and I hope you enjoy reviewing my customs. P.S. I often paint on the outside of the sock liner on purpose. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we've got ourselves a pair of Space Jam, a new Legacy Air Force One highs. So right off the jump, I think that these are a great nod to Serato's signature colorful galaxy style. Anybody familiar with the custom sneaker scene has to have seen some of Serato's pieces by now, probably even some Space Jam ones before, and these definitely have a similar vibe to them. There's some really clean stencil and pattern work done on the background of these, along with all of that paint splatter, and I also think that you did a really great job nailing that green glow effect around your lightning. Now taking a closer look at some of your character work, I think that all of this was very well done. If we look at LeBron for example, that fade is looking extra crispy right here. Then we also have Lola Bunny, Tweety Bird, Donald Duck, and Bugs Bunny, and all of the characters have this really nice glow behind them to not only help tie them into the background, but also to help distinguish them from the background. Then we have some great use of negative space for some of these other stencils like the Toon Squad, Space Jam, and some of these character silhouettes. Now in terms of any areas where I think there might be some room for improvement, even if getting paint on the sock liner is intentional, that's usually not what you're gonna be going for if you're trying to go for as clean of a look as possible. Now of course there's always room for artistic interpretation, but there's no real added benefit on the Bugs Bunny portrait, for example, to really have his ear extending onto the sock liner. But I do think in this situation, it would have made even more sense if you would have continued this galaxy background and colorful pattern onto your sock liner and onto your tongue rather than keeping the all white guts of the shoe. Then on the insides of the shoes where you try to outline both of the swooshes in white, I do think that that white paint should have been extended onto the edges of the swooshes also. And I'm also always going to stand by, lightning should not be as curved as this. Lightning has a lot more straight lines that are constantly changing directions rather than just completely curve the entire way throughout. But altogether, I think that this is a really cool and very well done pair of Space Jam custom shoes. Now it's just about trying to distinguish yourself from Serato's signature style. It's great to take inspiration from some of your favorite artists, but now how can you build on that and become known for your own style? So great job by you, Tie Your Shoes too. Next up, we have a pair here from JG Dioscuri. All right, we got a little bit of a Miami Vice theme painted on the box here. Let's see, hi Dylan and the DCF team. First of all, I wanna thank you for featuring my custom shoe on your channel. My name is Johnny and I came up with JG Dioscuri Customs, Dioscuri in Greek mythology, meaning twins, AKA Gemini. 
I've been following you since last year during the beginning of the pandemic. I was furloughed from my job and my son was born around the same time. Congratulations. I needed to find a safe way to make some income and I came across your YouTube channel. Your videos and tutorials inspired me to take a leap of faith and turn my hobby of airbrushing and art into more than a hobby. I'm still nowhere near your level, but I have improved in the past couple of months. I want to personally thank you for being open and providing tutorials to anybody wanting to get into customizing shoes. Now about the shoes, I am a Miami, Florida native and all about our hometown team. I've combined the Vice color tone theme to these Air Force Ones and added a splash of Miami to them. On one shoe, I have the Miami Beach skyline and the other palm trees and flamingos. They both have the MH design on the back. The front has Miami written out across both shoes. Thank you, Johnny Garcia. Now onto the shoes. All right, so as you mentioned, we have this really clean and simple two-tone Miami Vice theme done on this pair of shoes. The right shoe is done entirely in pink, the left shoe entirely in blue. Then when you place the two shoes together, you get to see that Miami text that's stretched across the toe box, and that's done in the inverse color of the two shoes. Now from this view is also where you get to really see the very subtle gradient of both shoes. So the outsides of both shoes feature a darker blue and a darker pink, and as we work our way insides, that's where you get to see a a little bit more of that lighter pink and that lighter blue. Then on the outsides of both shoes is where you get to see a little bit more of your stencil work. The right shoe features some palm trees and a flamingo, whereas the left shoe features that Miami skyline. And then on the back strap of both shoes, you get to see that Miami Heat logo. Now let's talk about some of that stenciling real quick. You have it stretched across multiple panels here, which as we all know, makes your life much more difficult in laying down the stencil nice and flat, but it still turned out very good here. But what I do think occurs anytime you have a stencil like this that's basically just placed right in the middle of the shoe is it really just ends up looking like a sticker. It's in no way interacting with the background. It's in no way interacting with any other part of the shoe. So if we just scoot that stencil down so that the bottom portion of the skyline is now placed right along your midsole, that's gonna make a whole lot more sense for your design. Same thing with the palm trees. Even if we just take these bases and scoot them right down to the midsole, that's just gonna make a whole lot more sense for you placement wise. Then I think that there's a couple of other spots where I would have liked to see you continue to play around with these inverse colors that you did on the toe box text. So if we take a look at those inside swooshes on the pink shoe, if you did that swoosh in blue, I think that could have been a great touch. Same thing for the blue shoe, if you did that in pink. And then the Nike Air threading that's on the back tab, I think that that would have been really cool to sort of do in the inverse colors also. So something else that I would recommend here that I think would really help elevate these designs and these stencils and just better help tie them in together into the rest of the shoe is your very strong use of blends that you showed on other parts of the shoe. So if we take a look at that skyline, for example, if you would just have a lighter blue directly behind the skyline, and then as we work our way up, if that blue got darker and there was a gradient there, now all of a sudden it looks like your skyline is up against a night sky. And now all of a sudden you have your stencil engaging with the background and that's just gonna make for a much better design overall. But overall, I think that this is a really clean Miami Vice custom. Of course, you always wanna continue to push yourself. Try to think of other ways that you can elevate your custom, whether it's using some new laces, doing something different on the tongue tags, swapping out the colors on those all white guts that you have on the sock liner and the tongue tags. But this is a really clean custom, so great job by you, man. And our final pair of the day comes from Riz Inc. Let's open up this smaller one first. All right. Nightmare before Christmas. Bubble wrapping skills, 10 out of 10 for sure.
All right, quick little note here. Dylan, thank you so much for taking the time out to review my kicks. I've only been at this for a short while, but your how-to videos have definitely helped me along the process. These are very special to me. They are one of my first pairs and they helped me get through a very tough time in my life when I lost my father last year. So I put a lot into these. Very sorry to hear about that, man. First off though, the box I collaborated with the shoe baker out of Atlanta. Shout out to my buddy, Nick. He constructed the box while I did the painting and all lighting work involved. Onto the kicks, I collaborated with All Shoes Matter out of Michigan on these. He is responsible for the micro LED screens and lights, while I'm responsible for the art and overall concept. A little bit about the art though, everything was hand painted, no stencil work was done on these. I used glow in the dark and black light activated paint. These babies also sport Swarovski's crystals throughout. The swooshes are custom made, they were done with acrylic and leather. Being a huge Tim Burton fan, I hope I did his art and masterpiece the justice it deserves. Again, thank you so much for reviewing them. I hope you and your audience enjoy them as much as I did putting them together. All right, now for these shoes. We gotta go ahead and get these screens turned on real quick. Look at the eyeball. Can we get the full setup again with the box and everything? Let's turn some of the lights off too. Look at how trippy the eyeball looks in the dark. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. This is like that one crazy house that every town has around Halloween. You gotta love this insane setup that we get to see here. All right, so it looks like we have a bunch of LEDs installed in both the lid and the main base of this box. This is a really dope box. You have a combination of acrylic and wood, a bunch of laser engraving, Jack Skellington on the outside, a bunch of pumpkins that are carved into the wood and then you get to see the colored acrylic behind it. Very well made. Of course you're gonna get that anytime you work with the shoe baker. So this is a really killer display for these. I mean, wow, man. Just like Tim Burton being one of the most insane visionaries we've had in modern history, this looks exactly like a shoe that would be right up his alley where it is just top to bottom, wall to wall, absolutely crazy. Uh, <laughs> Let's just go with the first thing that catches my eye on the toe boxes here. Uh, you get to see the Sally character. So she has her two huge eyeballs that are stretching across the toe boxes. Then you get to see a little bit of her hair that stretches onto those eyelid panels. And then some of the panels that wrap around the toe box will then have some of the patterns that are on Sally's dress. And that looks really, really cool. A lot of detail packed into those but I love this stitching effect that you did, especially that little drop shadow behind it. It really helps sell the 3D illusion to this and how it almost looks like these panels are stitched onto the shoe and held together by those stitches. So that's really cool. And that continues onto the eyelet panels and throughout some of the other parts of the shoe. So really nice touch there with that. Now, as we work our way back on both of the shoes, it looks like you switch to a little bit more of a landscape painting feel for a lot of these settings. I really dig that, especially because you have such a nice large canvas to work with. And on the outside of the left shoe, we have the Jack Skellington character where he's holding up the eyeball. And that is just such a dope illusion when you have the video turned on with the graveyard setting in the background. And then you also get to see these swooshes that like you mentioned are a combination of leather and acrylic underneath and what's really cool is some of the leather is carved out in the pumpkin's eyes and in the pumpkin mouth so you get to see some of that acrylic underneath and then when you have these LED lights inside the acrylic turned on <laughs> It is just absolutely crazy, man. Then on the inside of the left shoe, we get a huge painting of the Oogie Boogie character. That turned out incredibly dope. And something that I like that you did here and on a lot of other parts of the shoe also, is just having a little bit of your paint dripping onto the midsole or dripping onto some of the other panels. I don't think that's something that we see in the movie or in the artwork of Tim Burton or anything like that, but I like how you're still deciding to put a little bit of your own flavor into things. Now moving on to the outside of the right shoe, we have another great graveyard setting along with the ghost dog zero and you can see his little dog house is where you have the LED screen on this shoe with the movie playing in the background and man are there some really nice artistic touches that you applied throughout this entire shoe if we take a look at the dog here for example his body is basically see-through so it's like you you know took this image and turned the opacity down to but to be able to do that with paint is no easy task man and then if you take a look at his nose and ears how he's right next to this glowing pumpkin, these very subtle details of you applying that orange right onto the ears and onto the nose, that little glow effect, I mean, those are little details 
that really add up when you, or, or it's something that you also wouldn't notice until you've stared at this shoe for over 10, 15 minutes. So it's so dope to see you still spending the time on what may seem like such a minor detail but all of those little minor details really add up over time. Then moving on to the inside of the left shoe, we have another huge painting of the lock, shock, and barrel characters. The detail packed into all of these paintings is just absolutely incredible, man. Then just a few more of the other really cool add-ons that you have throughout the rest of the shoe. These purple metallic leather laces, those are super dope. A pumpkin lace lock, and something that I'm not sure I've seen too many times before, acrylic tongue tags with your logo, and then all of these Swarovski crystals that you featured throughout. There's so many spots where you incorporated just a tiny little bit of amount of glitter into your paint, glow in the dark paint, black light paint. I, I mean, there's nothing about this shoe that is simple. Now there's a couple design elements within the shoe that work better when the shoes are placed next to one another. We already talked about Sally on the toe box, but when you place the heels of the shoes together, the back tabs then form the two separate eyes of Jack Skellington, along with that little vertical strap right below it where you get to see some of his mouth. And man, what a treat that there's just more and more to discover the more you look at these shoes. So there is without a shadow of a doubt a million additional details that I'm sure I missed throughout this design, but this pair right here would absolutely be a dream come true to own for anybody who's a huge fan of A Nightmare Before Christmas. Even if this isn't a pair of shoes that would be up your alley, maybe they're way too over the top for you, just like Tim Burton's style in general, there's no way you can't help but enjoy the artistry put into them and the amount of detail, the hours, and the love that goes into a project like this. It is such a pleasure, in my opinion, to see something like this, a vision brought to life all of the passion that gets poured into a project like this, from the packaging, to the presentation, to the design itself, adding in LED screens, adding in LED lights, insane boxes, this is the type of stuff that's gonna inspire somebody like this watching this video to wanna do something more with their custom sneakers, and that's the type of stuff that's gonna continue to push our industry forward. So it is such a cool sight to see stuff like this happen, man, and this is truly, just an absolute work of art to be able to hold in my hands, man, and review. What an incredible job by you, buddy. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you go and check out all of these amazing artists. They do some absolutely incredible work, so definitely show them some love. And man, oh man, can I not help but say how much I love my job. For you guys to continuously trust me to review dope work like this on a daily basis, what an absolute dream come true of mine, man. And there is just so much talent in the custom sneaker community. It is absolutely mind blowing. You never know what you're gonna see on an episode of Reviewing Your Custom. So thank you guys for your continued support. Please go ahead and drop a like on this video if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more content, more episodes like this in the future. But until next time, I'm Dylan DeJesus, and now everybody get out there and just create.